Hey fellow nibblers, here we are with day 15, I think it is, a 365, sharing Neville's wisdom. Today I'm up in There Is No Fiction from 1968 and I totally believe Neville. I had a bit of a realisation yesterday, I'm taking part in a book club regarding revision. Now, what we do is revise one memory and change it into another memory. And then we believe the second memory. The first memory was something we deem uh, what's unideal, not ideal. And you change it to a memory that is ideal and acceptable to you and that aligns with the way you are, the way you want to be and what you're looking for. Now, the realisation came to me, it's like, hold on a minute, if that first memory I thought was so real, i.e. my reality, now I've just changed that memory via Neville's revision process. And since I revised it, I've got a new memory that's dominant and it's like, hold on a minute, the first memory has been obliterated, the second memory is dominant, meaning none of it's real, you can just make it all up. And here I am in a lecture called There Is No Fiction. It's magic how these things turn up, my lovelies. This one's dated 1968, let me Read this and how Neville opens it. I'm all excited. As you can tell, he says, Fiction is defined as an imaginary construction, which is unreal, as opposed to truth or reality. But what is real and what is imaginary when, in a spiritual sense, all existing things are imaginary. All existing things are imaginary. Try and process that one, my lovelies. And Neville shares a little bit about prayer, which we did yesterday. Let me read you what he says. Now, when you pray, you must immerse yourself in the feeling of the wish fulfilled. For the word pray means motion towards, accession to, at, or in the vicinity of. Point yourself towards the wish fulfilled and accept that invisible state as reality. Then go your way knowing the desire is now yours. You did it and you will not be surprised when it comes to pass. Then Neville shares a little bit more to support the theory that nothing's real. He says this, if an imaginal act produces an external fact to support it, then is not this world essentially imagined? I've read this a thousand times and probably heard Neville tell me a thousand times that imagination creates reality and it really does the more you practice with your imaginal acts and they come to fruition the more you'll realize it's true now let's continue with the lecture one more little line here just to smack us around the face and wake us up to reality neville says the world is all that you have imagined it to be even though you cannot remember when or how you brought it into being. And really what he's trying to tell us, when something happens out there in our 3D reality, we're so forgetful as generic man, we forget that we imagined this or we were unconscious when we imagined this and we think something happened to us, but it's not. We did it. That gets you every time, especially especially when you don't like what's coming up in 3D. And I really love the way Neville tells it like it is, which he's about to do in this paragraph. He says, You cannot feed the mind violence and not expect violence in the world. 
Although the networks will deny this, a friend at NBC TV studio told me that when it was official that Kennedy was dead, he received an order from New York that for the next four days, no violent films were to be shown. Next part's real funny. He said, well, I find it funny. Pandemonium took place in the studio as they went through their files trying to find enough non-violent film to cover four days. Lucky for them, most of the time will be taken up with the giant coverage of the funeral in New York City. Now, the thing about violence, i.e., be careful what you let into your consciousness. I've steered away from television because it really doesn't align with anything I'm aligning myself with. But anyhow, enough of that telling you what to do business. Just enjoy the fact that imagination creates reality. There is no fiction. None of this is real and you can prove it to yourself by doing and practicing Neville's revision technique. I don't recall if I've even recorded the pruning shears of revision, but I will be because it's important and our main purpose here on earth. Thank you, fellow Nevilleaholics, for your time and attention. Give me some thumbs up, some love, because you know I'm going to blow you a kiss up here. Don't forget to subscribe. See you tomorrow. Bye, guys.